Hi and welcome to this video. Uh, we are looking at problem 3 um, uh, here. And problem 3, we have been given the circuit which is on the screen, right? We have a, a 10 volt supply through a resistor. There are three diodes connected here. And you can see that if you assume the forward voltage of each of these diodes to be 0.7 volts, and uh, if all the diodes are in forward voltage, then you have the output voltage is just going to be 0.7 plus 0.7 plus 0.7, which is equal to 2.1 volts, right? Uh, however, what usually happens is that the forward voltage is not just 2.1 volts, but it is varying with the current that flows through the diode. And to take into uh, account uh, th that, we have to, we cannot be using the constant voltage drop model, but we have to be using the linear model or the small signal equivalent model. And I'll just discuss that model briefly uh, here. Now, if you remember the discussion of our transistor amplifiers in the lecture, this should be uh, fairly straightforward. Okay, so let's let's talk about that. So think about a diode here and think about the voltage across the diode. Let's call it Vd. Okay, let's say plus minus and the current Id. Now if we plot a characteristic of this and you've done this in lab, right? If you plot a characteristic of it and let's do it on only on the forward bias uh, side, what you get is something like this, isn't it? You get some curve like this that would be uh, that's what the curve would look like and let's say the cutoff uh, cutoff the forward voltage is somewhere here it's called 0 0.7 volts all right now uh, now at any particular voltage forward voltage that you apply so let's say we apply this forward voltage okay this is vt let's say you can calculate the approximate current at this value which is corresponding to id all right now if you look at this small region here let's say this small region here what you can do is you can approximate this characteristic as a straight line so you could say just around this point here you could you could assume that the diode is behaving like a straight line and you can see that the red line is almost similar to the blue line between these limits, isn't it? When you're just about around this, uh, uh, in, in this region. So in that particular small region, what you can do is you can approximate the diode as a resistance. So you can approximate the diode as a resistance with a resistance RD, which is equal to Vt over Id where Vt is equal to 25 millivolts. Okay, so you can see that what happens is for a particular ID, you get a particular resistance. If the current is smaller, you get a larger resistance. And if the current is higher, you get a smaller resistance. You get more slow, which means a smaller resistance. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so what we can do then, so what we are saying is, if there is a current flowing through the diode and there is a voltage vd and id on the diode which is this point if the current changes a little bit around this value id then you're just changing a, going a little bit here and there isn't it around this operating point and the behavior of the diode in that operating point can be characterized by uh, uh, characterized using this resistance rd the resistance of the diode does that make sense Okay, so let's use this property in our previous problem and look at how we can solve that problem. Okay, so let me go back into uh, to the slide here. So if so, what the first question says? Okay, tell tell. So this resistance has given us one kilo, and what we are asked to do is what happens to the voltage when what happen, happens to the output voltage when the input power supply here, the 10 volt changes by a plus minus one volt. Okay, so, so that's what we are asked to figure out. All right, so here's, here's how uh, 
uh, you can do this problem. So what we can do is, first of all, what we need to do is we need to find out the current through the diodes ID. Now to do that, let's just use the constant voltage drop model. Okay, so there's a 0.7 volt drop here. There's a 0.7 volt drop here. There's a 0.7 volt drop here. So the total drop is 2.1. So the current ID, which is equal to the current IR, which is equal to 10 minus 2.1 volts divided by 1K, which come, turns out to be 7.9 milliampere. Okay. Now that we have calculated ID, we can calculate the resistance of the diode, RD, and that is going to be VT over ID, which is equal to 25 milli volts divided by 7.9 milli amperes, which turns out to be 3.2 ohms. So now, for the change of voltage around 10 volts, we can redraw our circuit like this. And I'm going to draw this circuit in red. Okay, so we have our one kilo. And each of the diodes is now represented by a resistor. Right? So each of this, and then we have a ground here. We have, now, so this is RD, this is RD, and this is RD. This is one kilo, and what's the input? It's not 10 volts, it's this small signal, right? It's the signal around which our circuit is operating. So it's like plus minus one volt, because that's the change around the 10 volts that we are getting. So this kind of a circuit is called the small signal equivalent circuit. So this is not universally applicable. This circuit is only applicable around the current ID, the around the current ID that we have already calculated, right? In other words, it's only valid in this particular region. So we are constraining it. We are saying this model is only valid there. Okay. Now you can calculate VO. What is your VO going to be? So we know that this, um, this, the total resistance here, each of the RD is 3.2 ohms, so this is 9.6 ohms, and we can calculate the output voltage based on that. So what is the output voltage going to be? VO is equal to 9.6 divided by 1K plus 9.6 times 1 volt. So, and that turns out to be 9.5 millivolt. Right, so, so what, what was our input? Our input was, so 10 volts plus minus one volt, right? And what is our output of the circuit? VO, corresponding to this input, the VO is equal to 2.1 volts plus minus 9.5 volts. Okay, hopefully, uh, so, so that's how you would attempt part A. Now let's